Now that we've installed VirtualBox and imported our VM, we'll take a look at booting and using the CU Computer Science Virtual Machine. To start, we'll need to open up VirtualBox. When VirtualBox launches, we'll see the VM image that we have previously imported on the left side of the screen. On the right side of the screen, we can see some information about this virtual machine. To boot the virtual machine, make sure it's selected and click the green Start button near the top of the screen. As the virtual machine starts to boot, it'll launch in its own window. It can often take a minute or two for the virtual machine to complete the boot up process. During this time, you may pres be presented with a dialog box regarding the way the mouse and keyboard interact with the virtual machine. If you are presented with these dialog boxes, simply read them and click OK to dismiss them. The VM boot process is complete when the Ubuntu application launcher becomes available along the left side of the screen. Occasionally after booting the VM, you may experience an issue where parts of the Ubuntu screen are outside of the scope of the virtual machine window. To fix this problem if it occurs, simply shrink and re-maximize the virtual machine window. This will force Ubuntu to adjust its resolution to properly fill the VM window size. You can actually use this feature to set the VM window size to whatever you'd like. You can see as I change the VM window size, Ubuntu is automatically adjusting its resolution to fill the window. We'll go ahead and keep the window maximized. The first time you boot the VM, you'll be presented with the Dropbox login window. This window will allow you to set up Dropbox on the virtual machine. Just as you can use Dropbox to transfer files between separate computers, you can use Dropbox to transfer files between the virtual machine and the computer on which you are running it. Another advantage to using Dropbox to store your files on the virtual machine is that it will provide you with an off-site backup of all of your work should your virtual machine crash or need to be reinstalled. We'll go ahead and skip the Dropbox setup now by simply closing the screen. But if you would like to set up a Dropbox account, you could simply click Next and follow the instructions to associate or create a new Dropbox account on the virtual machine. The virtual machine runs Ubuntu 12.04. Ubuntu is a variant of the GNU Linux operating system. Along the left-hand side of the Ubuntu desktop, you'll see a series of icons. These icons are shortcuts, and when clicked, each will launch the application with which it is associated. Along the top of the Ubuntu desktop, you can find the main menu bar. At the right-hand side of this menu bar, there's a little gear icon. Clicking this gear icon will allow you to do things like shutting down your virtual machine, logging out, or locking the VM. The main menu also provides your standard file, edit, view, and help menus that you'll find in many programs. One of the first things you'll want to do after booting your VM is ensure that your virtual machine has access to the internet. As long as the host computer that's running your VM can access the internet, the VM should be able to access the internet as well. You have two options for browsers in which to access the internet from the VM, Google Chrome and Mozilla Firefox. We'll go ahead and launch Google Chrome by clicking its icon on the left-hand side application launcher. The first time Google Chrome launches, you'll be presented with a sign-on and sync screen. If you have a Google or Gmail account, and you use Google Chrome on other machines, providing your Gmail account information here will allow you to sync your settings between all of your copies of Google Chrome on multiple machines. We'll go ahead and skip doing this but for now. If we click the Home button, we should be able to load the Colorado Computer Science Moodle page. 
As you can see, the page has loaded, and thus our internet appears to be working correctly. We can also double check it by going to a basic website like Google. Once we've confirmed that the internet is working correctly, we can go ahead and close Google Chrome by clicking the red X in the upper left corner of the screen. Other notable programs in the virtual machine include the terminal, Genie, and Emacs. Genie is a basic editor and IDE that will allow you to write and manage your programs. Some of you may choose to use this with the courses you are taking. In addition to Genie, you can also use Emacs. Emacs is a full-fledged editor that is common on many Unix systems. Most of you will also find that there are going to be times when you need to use the terminal on your virtual machine. To launch a terminal window, click the terminal icon on the left-hand application launcher. We'll go ahead and maximize our terminal screen. When the terminal starts, you'll be presented with a basic prompt that tells you the name of the current user and the name of the machine on which you are running. The terminal is a text-based interface that allows you to run programs on your virtual machine. You can run simple programs like the list or ls program that will print the contents of the current directory. I can run a program like the print working directory or pwd command to see what directory I'm currently in. And I can run the clear program to erase all of the output currently on my terminal screen. In addition to the programs that allow you to manipulate and view the file system, you can also run some editors directly in the terminal. Emacs, which we looked at before, in windowed mode can also be run in terminal mode from the terminal. The virtual machine also has Vim installed, which is another popular editor some of you may be used to using. In addition to the basic programs inside the terminal, Linux comes with a self-documenting system called the man pages or manual. To view a man page for a specific command, type man and then the name of the command. If we want to know more about the man command, we can type man man. This will open up the man page for the command that explains everything from the name of the command to a description of what it does to various ways I can call it. When you've read what you need in the man page and you're ready to close it, hit the Q button on your keyboard. To view the man page for the ls command that I ran earlier, we can run man ls. As we can see, the ls command lists the directory's contents. We'll be going over more details of the terminal and how to use it, the text-based Linux interface at a later date. But for now, when you're ready to close your terminal, you can either click the X in the upper left-hand corner or simply type exit and hit enter. If you would like to browse the files on the VM via graphical interface, you can click the home folder in the left-hand application launcher. This will open up your home folder in a standard graphic file browser window. As you can see, your home folder contains a documents folder for storing documents, a downloads folder for storing anything you download in Firefox or Google Chrome, and music pictures and video folders for multimedia content. You can also view other parts of the file system beyond your home folder by clicking the file system or other link on the left-hand side of the file browser window. We'll go ahead and close the file browser window for now. If you would like to run a program on your virtual machine that is not in the shortcuts along the left-hand side, click the Ubuntu icon at the top of the application launcher. This will bring up a window that allows you to search for other programs on your virtual machine. We'll go ahead and do a test search and launch a program that isn't included on the application launcher. As you can see, this presents me with a basic game of solitaire. I'll go ahead and close this for now. When you are done using your VM, you need to shut it down just like you would a normal machine. When you're ready to use it again, you can reboot it, and all of the work will be as you previously left it. To shut down the VM, click the gear in the upper right hand corner and select Shut Down from the menu. Go ahead and confirm that you'd like to shut down by clicking the Shut Down button on the pop up that appears. As you can see, the virtual machine will begin to shut down. When the shutdown process is complete, the virtual machine window will close and will be presented with the VirtualBox Manager where we started. If I would like to start the VM up again, I would highlight it and click Start. Or if I'm done working with virtual machines for now, 
I can go ahead and close VirtualBox via the X in the upper right hand corner. This concludes the basic tutorial on using your virtual machine. Future tutorials will be available that go into more detail on using the terminal and other nuances of the Linux operating system.